We apologize for the audio quality of this recording. Regardless, we hope you enjoy the episode. Thank you. This is Natural Powerlifting Radio. Deadlifts, chicken nuggets, video games. This is Check My Total, a powerlifting podcast with Timothy Payne and Andrew Henson. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Check My Total podcast, the only podcast that's willing to check your total. Me and T Payne here, we're going to be doing another uh, myth buster, and uh, today's myth is um, uh, today's myth is doing an an exercise for a certain body type will reduce fat at that location you're doing the exercise for oh that's no, no, more simpler yeah for example andrew this is an example he gave me a second ago if you're trying to lose fat around your belly you need to do a bunch of sit-ups and crunches and ab roll outs and all that mess yeah so like if you got flabby arms doing bicep curls we're gonna rid of your fat we're gonna that that is the that is the myth we're proposing that Working out certain areas of the body will tighten up your skin, and you lose fat in that area. So we're going to be uh, we're going to be uh, going going around giving our opinions on that, given yeah. what actually happens. Yeah. So, I guess I'll start it off by saying that that's a myth that doing an exercise for a certain area will not get rid of will not necessarily get rid of body fat in that area. So I got to a, a flabby belly doing sit-ups will not automatically make fat from my belly go away. Um, it it doesn't work like that. Um, so what what actually happens is you lifting weights and getting stronger or cardio overall burning calories and it will eventually over time take your fat down as long as you know you're not eating like a twink twinkies all day and your your diet's right. Assuming your diet's all right, then overall, you know, doing sit ups might contribute to your core getting stronger and just overall calorie burn, but you don't control where your body loses fat at when you first start losing weight. Nope. Generally, wherever you put fat on first is, well, a lot of times the last place it comes off because it's going to burn up where the least fat is first and then move to places where you're more fat. Yeah, and it is pretty different for different individuals. Like me, I know when I start losing weight or something, the like, I lose weight at my waist first. That's where I lose my weight at. Another term for what we're talking about is called spot reduction. But the big takeaway is when you're trying to lose fat, like Andrew said, you can't choose where it comes from. You just have to lose it. And it may yeah. take, you know, a while for you to hit the spot you want to hit. Exactly. You know, I would recommend if you really are trying to, if you have a lot of fat in one area and you're trying to, you want to get rid of it, I mean, you just have to overall increase your activity and work a bunch, like work your whole body. And get losing the- weight's all about calories in, calories out. Yeah. And, well, and you know how clean you're eating too. Yeah. And another thing about losing fat is that you're not actually losing the fat itself. You're shrinking the fat cells because your fat cells never go away. Yeah. You're just shrinking them and enlarging them. That is true. Your fat cells never go away. Do, do you stay with the same amount of fat cells from birth? I don't know about that. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know about that. Let me go to the interwebs. True. But, uh... Because isn't it, is it the same with your muscle, too? Like, you don't gain, like, extra muscle tissue. You just build the tissue you have bigger and stronger. Right. Yes. Yeah. 
I don't know how it works when you're a baby. I don't know if you grow more and it stops at a certain age. I don't... Uh, it says the average human adult has about 30 billion fat cells. Ooh. With a weight of 30 pounds. Or for our listeners across the seas, 13.5 kilograms. Ooh. If excess weight is gained as an adult, fat cells increase in size before dividing and increasing the absolute number of fat cells present. So, okay. Oh, so you do. Yeah, you get them so fat that they have to split up. Huh. Do you get them so small again that they have to shrink back into one? I, I think that's the thing. I think it just, you know, just multiplies. They don't go back the other way. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh. It'd be really cool if we could get some kind of anatomy person on here, biology. Yeah, one of these, like, biology chemist people. And if you're one of those listening to this, send us a message. Yeah, you probably know more about fat cells than we do. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you about some science behind the stuff that we do. Yeah, for real. But at the end of the day, if you want to lose fat, you just got to eat less and work harder. Yeah, that's true. The spot reduction doesn't work. Yeah, you can't decide. You can't decide. You just got to do everything. That's true. I always wondered what those little, uh, what what those little wraps you would put around your belly and it would vibrate your belly all day long. It's like instant six pack machines that they claim. Yeah, I've always wondered what they feel like. I've never actually used one. I don't even know if they do anything. <laughs> If you found one, it'd be, like, from the 80s or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There ain't no no shortcut to losing weight, really. There's no shortcut to anything at the end of the day. If you want to do something the right way. That's true. I mean, I just, I wish we had more concrete facts to tell y'all why it doesn't work. Let's see. Well, hormones, people. Yeah, that's got a lot to do with it, too. Hormones. That's another thing. If you're trying to lose weight, it's very, very difficult to lose weight when your hormones are all out of whack. It's very, very difficult. That's one thing to get tested, I guess, if you, if you know you have a doctor or something. Like, if you do a yearly blood test, um, they should be able to tell you if something's off. As far as your hormone level. Yeah. And if you're a female listening to this, and an athlete or strength strength lifter or fitness person, I bet whatever birth control somebody's on can really affect how they're making gains or losing weight or doing whatever. That is true. I've heard about that. Becca, what question did you just ask? Why is it hard to lose weight when your hormones are out of whack? Did you hear that? Yeah. Go ahead and let her know. Because your hormones are out of whack. I don't know. I used to know a lot more. I got I to gotta, I gotta look this up. Yeah. It's like, it has to do with, how, I think, if I remember correctly, it's like, it's really hard to lose weight when your cortisol levels are shooting up out of the roof and, like, blood pressure is, like, insanely out of whack. And... Estrogen probably has something to do with it. Because I know estrogen. the more estrogen you have in your system, that builds fat. If you're a dude. Which I guess the same thing goes if you're a woman. I don't know. Here we go. How hormones affect weight loss. Oh, can estrogen levels affect weight gain? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Or I guess it's the other way around. Fat produces estrogen. Now that I'm thinking about it. So there's this one thing in estrogen called estrodiol. And. What it does is it helps regulate metabolism, and when you get older, or, or if if for some reason you have your estrogen levels decrease a lot or really low estrogen, you don't have these hormones that that are helping to regulate your metabolism. This is for a girl. I don't. I'm not exactly sure what it is for a guy. I don't know if like 
a guy needs a higher or lower estrogen out. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But, yeah, when you go, when a lot of women go through menopause, they also put on weight, and that's because their hormones are all, are like, going away, and their estrogen drops. Makes sense to me. So, yeah, that's one hormone that can affect your, your weight loss. Um, as far as that birth control thing goes, I mean, anything you put in your body is going to have an effect on you. I don't know, I've heard all kinds of women having crazy stuff go on when they're on something. Like, I know it drove my sister crazy. I'm pretty sure she's not taking anything anymore just because it had her so out of whack. Her mood yeah. and everything. But also, if you're doing if you're doing the right things and healthy and fit, then a lot of that stuff, I would assume, would balance itself out. Yeah, it, it, it should, you know. To assuming you don't need body, anything. Yeah, assuming you don't have some medical condition, it should get better and balance out. Um, right. And, you know, and also, you know, your stress levels have a lot to do with it. You know, people that are high-strung all the time are are pretty, are going to have a hard time losing weight. Because I think it releases some kind of chemical that suppresses it when you're stressed out. Yeah, there's a whole science to it, people. Yeah. There's a whole science to it, but spot reduction training, not very effective. Big ol' X on that. Just just mark it off if you're looking at ways to lose weight. Yeah, if you're looking at ways to lose weight, spot reduction training does not work. Yeah. Now, if you lose a bunch of weight and you got some saggy skin or something, which really ain't fat, that's just your skin being stretched out, doing curls or abs or whatever and building muscle to fill that skin back out, you can do that. Yeah. That'll help you some, but that's not exactly losing weight. Yeah, that's true. Which, you know, if you're fat and you build muscle, you're just building muscle under your fat. I mean, you're still, still got it. Yeah, that's true. You're still going to have it. You're just pushing it out a little bit more. Yeah. Well, we kind of went all over the place this podcast, but that's some interesting stuff. Yeah. We really need to start actually studying before we do these podcasts. I know. Yeah, we actually... <laughs> I apologize, yes, our listeners. Let's see. I wonder, let's see, what's the biggest... But seriously, if, if you're a scientist out here and you know something, we'd love to talk to you. Yeah, huh, for real. It'd be really yeah. interesting. Yeah, if, if someone knows the science and biology on a deep level, or at least deeper than we do, <laughs> <laughs> then contact us and we'll get you on the show. Or if you're just a woman and know something about it and have experienced this firsthand. True, yeah. Oh, also, I messaged, uh, I've not heard back yet, but if uh, the guy from the UK is listening to this, we want to have you on the podcast. Yes, sir. You want to, we, I don't know if you've seen the message we sent you, but we want to have you on, so. Yeah. He's a uh, working man, he might not have listened to us in a minute. Yeah, that's true. But. We'd love to have you on. Uh, let's see. What are these hormones? So one says, this has cortisols. That's a stress hormone. So, yeah. If you... Your if cortisol your cortisol levels raise. raise. Yeah. Which apparently also makes your insulin raise. So when your cortisol goes up, your insulin goes up, which makes losing weight really fast. Or really, really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of a lot of these things I'm reading here are saying, you know, obviously being physical and eating right's good, but uh, they say a lot of your hormone imbalances can come from lack of sleep or a or a um, not uh, routine sleeping habits, going yeah. going to sleep at different times every night. I mean, the way I think about sleep is almost like you're, you're a robot or something. You have to plug yourself into the wall to recharge your batteries. You yeah. Know, you, you plug your phone in, depending on how long your phone's plugged in, you're either going to be functioning at 60% or you're going to be functioning at, you know, 95%. So you got to plug yourself back in every night and get get charged up and get all your levels right. You know, if you're functioning at 60%, you're probably out of whack at some point 
And on the flip side of that, I understand a lot of people got jobs and babies and they can't regulate it all that well. Yeah. But, the stress of the real world. Yeah. If you can, just do your best. So, you know, also, we, we should, if you have any, like, miss you want us to bust, shoot us a message on Instagram. Yeah, if something you're not sure about or just something you think's fishy. And if you tell us what myth you want to bust, we'll actually study it before we just get on here and start going. Yes, yes. and uh, if you want to debate about a myth, we'd love to do that too. Yeah, if you think we're wrong. Yeah. If you think we're wrong about something, then get on here and debate us and show us up. Um, It'd be fun times. Yeah, so... Maybe maybe we should maybe we should uh poll poll do one of those Instagram uh questions. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Let's do it. So, but yeah, I think that that kind of about wraps it up as as far as I know on this on the myth of spot reduction training. Good thing you found the actual term for it. <laughs> I got you. The one thing I looked up. So yeah, um, a lot of it has to do with when it comes to losing weight, you gotta get your hormones right. You got to get your diet right, you got to get your sleep right, and you got to get your exercise right. And then it will all come in time. And just pray you lose it where you want to lose it. Yeah. yeah you if you go long enough, you'll lose it all. Yeah. Yeah, if you keep going, you'll eventually lose fat in your belly. Yeah. If you start to lose fat there, you'll eventually lose it. It just might not be the first place. Yeah. So... Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate every listener on here taking the time out of their hard-working day and their tax-paying dollars to listen to this podcast. This is one of the only podcasts where you will ever listen to that has two guys on it, both talking science and both not having any science degrees. <laughs> Except I have a computer science degree. But that's a little different. I only know binary science, people. I don't know how humans work. I just know how machines work. Let me tell you, the easiest way to get through weight loss is to fully integrate with the machine. Become the robot. Leave this body behind. Shoot yourself up with those IBM steroids. That's all you need, people. Get linked together. The neural net is real. You can talk in your mind, people. We don't talk with our mouths anymore. We talk to our brains. Get up on to the cloud. That's the only way to live forever. People, I'll see you on the other side. This is Skynet. We out. Up next is the IBP NC State Push-Pull Championships in Gastonia, North Carolina on July 13th. We hope to see everyone there. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. Be sure to follow at CheckMyTotal on Instagram for all the latest updates.